And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Praise the Lord, everyone. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. We're blessed to be in the house once again. Lord has given us another blessed week, and we give him all the glory, the honor, and the praise for him doing so in our life. You may be seated. We thank him for saving us, delivering us, and putting us in a position to where we can lead others unto the Lord. We also want to thank God for each one of you who are in the building this morning. We thank God for those of you who are viewing by television, those who are viewing by Facebook, YouTube. We welcome you Amen. to the Pentecost Revival Hour and also the Lizella Pentecostal Church. Amen. And I do want to give, before we go into our service, a, a little more information about our ministry our church address, we are location here is 7545 Knoxville Road in Lizella, Georgia. And we do invite everyone, if you ever are in the central Georgia area, to feel free to come and be in our services. Currently, we are only having one service uh, where we all come together. That is our Sunday morning service. Every Sunday morning at 11 a.m., we are here. And we invite you to come and be in that service. Our medical address is 7697 Knoxville Road, Lazella, Georgia, zip code 31052. And we do want to thank every one of you who are writing the ministry. Some of you are giving donations to the ministry. Some are even, even tithing to the ministry. We want to tell you we appreciate Everything that you are doing to assist us in getting the gospel of Jesus Christ out. Amen. There is a cost involved in everything, particularly in this ministry that we do. We're not on television for free. And so we thank God for, for CTN, for them partnering with us, allowing us to be on their network. And we also want to thank those of you who are, who are giving. Uh, if you would like to give to the ministry electronically or online, you can do so. Amen. We do have a PayPal account. That information will be on the screen. Yes. And if you desire to donate to us uh, through PayPal, you can do so. Yes, so I'm doing it that way, and we appreciate everything that you're doing to give to the ministry. As I said earlier, we thank God for our life, our health, and our strength. We also have other services uh, that you can join in uh, by computer, telephone, or uh, electronically through Zoom. And I do want to give you the Zoom information. The meeting ID is 296-151. 7611. Once again, it's 296 151 7611. And the passcode is 399 261. Once again, the passcode is 399 261. We have Sunday school every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Time on Zoom. And if you would like to be in that class, you, we encourage you to do so. We also have Bible study 
on Mondays and Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Zoom. On Monday night, I am the instructor. On Tuesday night, Pastor Willie Wooten is the instructor. So we encourage everyone to tune in to those services. We're able to access it. You don't have to have to be in a church building. You can be in your car. You can be at your home. And, and you can tune in to these services that we have on Zoom. Everything, and we know that we've been in a virus now a little over two years, and everything that, that the virus brought to us was not bad. Some things we're able to do now that we weren't doing before the virus came. We found other ways to get the gospel out, out of the four walls. And so we thank God for these opportunities that have been presented unto us. And like I said, thank you to those of you who are viewing, some of you are viewing live right now on YouTube and also Facebook. And we just thank you for tuning in to our service. And now at this time, we're going to get ready to go on into our service. The devotional leaders coming. Give the Lord a hand of praise as they come. In Jesus' name, God. hallelujah. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise this morning. At this time, I would like to ask if you would please bow your heads and let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Come on and clap your hands. Oh, we came to praise his name today. Come on and lift your hands unto the Lord. How many of you have Jesus touched? And when he touched, he made a big difference in your life. He's done that for me. Can I get a witness? Oh, hallelujah. Shackled by a heavy burden Neath the load of guilt and shame Then the hand of Jesus touched me And now I'm no longer the same He touched me Yes, he touched me, and oh, the joy that floods my soul, something happened, and now I witness yes he touched me and all the joy that floods my soul yes something happened and now Jesus, come on and praise his name. Amen. While you're standing, put your Bibles in your hand, lift them up to the Lord, 
And repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I believe what it says to believe. I come to the Lazella Pentecostal Church to be taught the Word of God. I will not serve the devil. I will not live in sin. Jesus Christ died for my sin. And the blood of Jesus cleansed me from all sin. I am Christ-like. I am born again. And I have power over the devil. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Again, we honor God for allowing us to be back in the house of worship one more time. I am so thankful unto the Lord that he allowed us to be here. I honor him first of all, and I thank him for what he is doing in our lives. I thank God for Apostle Phelps and all of the work that he done while he was here because he was always working unto the Lord, always busy, always had something to do. So I thank God, praise the Lord, for this ministry because he played, played a big part in getting it up and running. And we'll forever be thankful unto the Lord for what God had done for us. Truly, God has blessed us this morning. He blessed all of us, you who are watching this telecast. You're watching because God has blessed you. Those of you that are on the Facebook and on the YouTube, it's all because of Jesus. I honor him with all my being. And I thank God for these pastors. I thank God for our pastor and for Sy, Pastor Wood, Pastor Phelps, and Pastor Dinner. Thank God for all our assistant pastors. I thank God, praise the Lord, for the ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God has gave us some great ministers. I thank God, praise the Lord, for our chairman, deacon, and our deacon staff. I give God glory for them. And I thank God, praise the Lord, for the missionaries and for all of you that it takes to make up this congregation here this morning. I'm excited about Jesus. You know, whenever uh, Missionary Marsha starts singing, my heart started rejoicing. I said, my heart started rejoicing, and it's rejoicing in the Lord. I thank him for all the things that, that he is doing because he don't have to do it. I want all of you to know that uh, call us on the phone and ask for prayer. We're praying for you. We don't just pray for you on Sundays, but we pray for you every day. The Lord allow us to pray morning, noon, and night. And we are praying unto the Lord for salvation, first of all, healing, and blessings. Because we know it all comes from the Lord. 
We're going into our message for today. The title of the message is, Lord, I need a blessing. Lord, when I say Lord, I'm talking about the anointed one. I'm talking about the one that is superior. I'm talking about the one that is over everybody, that is over all things. His name is Jesus. Now, I, I take it personally. Because I, I'm talking about me now, I need a blessing. I need a blessing from the Lord. Because I realized that it was the Lord that blessed me to wake up this morning. And after waking up, he blessed me to open me to I. And after opening these two eyes, he blessed me to be able to get up and to do for myself this morning. I thank God for the blessing because I need a blessing. I need a blessing to keep going forward. Into the name of the Lord. You may be seated. You know, God just don't only bless us with funds and money, but God got all kinds of ways to bless us. I'm thankful and I'm blessed because I can lift up holy hands. I'm blessed because I'm closed in my right mind. I'm blessed because I can still praise the name of the Lord. See, if you can praise the name of the Lord, that means you are blessed. If you can lift him up, that means that you are blessed. If you can do for yourself, that means you are blessed. If you got feeling in your hand, you got feeling in your feet, you are blessed. You may be seated. I was talking to a lady on yesterday, and, and she was telling me uh, about her pain. And I said to her, oh, what a blessing. And she said, I'm telling you about my pain. I said, oh, what a blessing. Because if you can feel pain, you are alive. Dead people don't feel pain. Not from the Lord. But she said, I hadn't looked at it like that. I said, if your hand got pain in it and you can feel it, that hand is alive. I said, if your feet got pain in it and you can feel it, those feet is alive. Lord, I need a blessing. I'm going to be speaking to you. I want you to open your Bibles unto the book of 2 King, the fourth chapter. And I'm going to begin reading at the first verse. And it reads, now that cried a woman, a certain woman, or the wives of the son of the prophet unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditors is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondsmen. Here, praise the Lord, we find a certain woman. Now, when I look at it, 
I look at it in a way where this woman done lost her husband. And I can relate to losing your husband. Call, 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 call mine gone. But she had two sons left. Now the creditor, I'm talking about, Lord, I need a blessing. The creditor came to her house to take her two sons. Think about it. She ain't got no husband. Her husband done been taken. And now, and now the creditor is here to get her boys. And you're talking about really being alone. She'll really be alone if she to, uh, lose them boys. But you know what she did? She, 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 she went uh, unto Elisha, the man of God. You know, that's where we need to go. We need to go to people that's serving God. They can tell you some things and they can help you. She said, uh, you know my husband. Ain't it good to know somebody that's in the Lord? Everybody ought to know somebody that knows Jesus. She said, the creditor is come to take my two sons to be bondsmen. And let's see what the man of God said. And Elijah said unto her, what shall I do for thee? Tell me. What? has thou in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid has not anything in the house save a pot of oil. It's rough. It's tough. She didn't ask the man of God for no money. But the man of God spoke to her. And he said unto her, what do you have in your house? Sometime God want to take you to the empty part. Some people can't be blessed because they too full. Sometimes you need to be empty. I'm talking about unto the Lord. For the Lord to give you the miracle that you want. Now, 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 he asked her what she have in her house. And she said, in my house, I don't have anything save a pot of oil. That's what she told the man of God. And let's see what he said. Because she needed a blessing. This woman need a blessing. Lord, I need a blessing. Then said he, Go borrow vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. That means borrow a lot of them. Now, she could have had an attitude. She could have, I'm coming here to you, and I'm asking you for help. And you asking me what I got in my house. Don't you know if I had anything in my house or anything, I wouldn't be coming to you? This lady didn't take no attitude. The man of God is telling her what she ought to do. You know when God tells us what we ought to do, you know we ought to do. We ought to do what the Lord tells us that we ought to do. And let's see what happened here. The fourth verse say, And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and thou shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. He giving her some orders. God always give us some orders. He told her, now, when you get through borrowing these vessels, I want you to go in your house. 
And when you get in the house, you and your sons, I want you to shut the door. You know, when you think about that door being shut, all those nosy neighbors can't hinder you. When you turn off everything that you got, and ain't nobody but you and Jesus, people, you can talk to Jesus. Nobody but just you and Jesus. You can have that peace on the inside. That peace go beyond all understand. People just don't understand how you can have so much peace. But it's because of Jesus. So what did she do? She went from him and shut the door up on her and her sons who brought the vessels to her. And she pulled out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet another vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the all stayed. We're talking about miracle work and power. He told her to borrow not a few. That means she's supposed to borrow many. She did what the man of God told her to do. She went home. She closed the door on her and her sons. And she pulled all out. Somebody ought to shout Jesus up in here. And after she had finished with all of those vessels, she still had a pot of oil. She ain't losing, she gaining. We, we, we ain't talking about no empty house here because the house is full because it's full of oil. They are full. And when she looked at her vessel, her vessel is still full. It's as if nothing came out of that vessel. But she knows she she knows she had a cruise all. And I'm pulled out and filled up all those vessels, and she still got a cruise of all. See, God don't take nothing from you. God don't want to take nothing from you. He wants to bless you. God wants you to be happy. All state. Seven verse said, Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, Go, sell the all, and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children. All the rest. See what he said. Now this is what you call a man of God. This is what you call a woman that loves God. Because see a lot of people when they start getting a blessing. They start forgetting about where the blessing comes from and who hoped them. They, they forget about who had an input in it. But no, not this woman. This woman, vessels are full. Her all crews are still full, but what do she do? She don't make no move till she go to the man of God. She go to the man of God, and she tell him what's going on. What do he tell her? Go sell that all. Pay your debt. And you and your sons live of the rest of it. In other words, I don't want to take nothing from you. People of God, they don't want to take nothing from you. They want to give you. They want you to have. See, now, now Elijah could have said, well, let me get mine for it now. Because I don't want to tell you what to do. So, so mine going to come off the top. And then what never left, you go do this. But that ain't what he said. He said, you take that all and you go sell that all. 
And the first thing you do after you say a little ah uh -uh, is pay your debt. You're not going to lose your sons because you're going to pay the debt. And after you pay the debt, you're going to have some left. You and your sons live, 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 live by the rest. Lord, I need a blessing. This woman was blessed. She was blessed by the Lord. God opened the windows of heaven and pulled her out of blessing. But she went to the right place. She made the right decision. She talked to somebody that loved God. And people, it's a whole lot different than people that love God and people that say they love God. There's a lot of people that say they love God, but they don't love God. But this, this woman, she loved God. I'm going to tell you about another woman. This woman, in the eighth verse, it reads, and it fell on a day that Elijah passed through to Shunem. For there was a great woman. And she constrained him to eat bread. And it was so. It's, and so was it. That as often as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. Here's a lady. She see the man of God going by her house. She perceived that, hey, this is a man of God. Y'all, y'all, y'all know when y'all you, you 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 check things. You know how to do. You know when people are uh, uh, men and women of God, and you know when they ain't. So she would fix them some food. She constrained them. In other words, she got them to come to her house and eat. And let's see what happened in the ninth verse. And she said unto her husband, this is a woman, Behold, I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passes by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick. And it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in thither. Now, this woman ain't asked for no money because this woman is in good shape. When, when you're able to build a, feed people and then build a room onto your house for them to live in, you're in pretty good shape. She didn't just take it up on herself. But she went and talked to her husband. She talked to her husband. She said, I perceive that this is a man of God who continued to come by our house. In other words, let us make a little room onto our house. And when we get the room made, we want to put something in it. We want to put a, a bed in there. We want to put a stool in there. We want to put a table in there. And a candlestick. So when he come in, he'll have a place to rest. And it fell on a day. I'm in the 11th verse. And it fell on a day. When he came thither, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. I'm talking about a man of God. This man got something on his mind. People of God always have something on their mind. 
He's laying there in that room that she done built onto her house. And he is thinking. And he said unto Gehazi, his servant, call this Shumanite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he, and he said unto him, now, say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Would it thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain or to the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. In other words, I'm good. I'm good. Sometimes you ask folk what they want. They know they're good. But they still want you to give them something. But she said, I dwell among my own people. And he said, I'm in the 14th verse, and he said, what then is to be done for her? Talking to Gehazi. And Gehazi answered, verily, she has no child, and her husband is old. She he had a servant that had been snooping around now. Gehazi had been snooping around now. He find out, hey, it's so quiet. Ain't no children here. You know, if any, any kids in the house, there's going to be some noise in the house. But Gehazi began to tell him her husband is old, and she have no child. And he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood at the door. Here it is again. She stood in the door. And he said, about this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thy handmaid. In other words, don't be playing with me. With no child in the house. She didn't have no children. She had money. She had stuff. But she didn't have no child. The man of God said, you going to embrace a son by this time next year. Lord, I need a blessing. Lord, I need a blessing. Lord, I need a blessing. Glory to God. And the woman conceived, I mean the 17th verse, and bare a son. And at that season that Elijah had said unto her, according to the time of life, and when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out into the field to his father, to the reapers. And he said unto his father, my head, my head. And he said to the lad, carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon, and he died. I mean, this is something here. She doesn't say, hey, don't, don't play with me. Don't, don't tell me something's going to happen. That is not going to happen. Don't, 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 don't fool me. See this woman here and her husband. They didn't have nobody that was going to take over their inheritance. Cause, cause, cause they didn't have any kids. They were barren. They didn't have any kids. So when she did get a son, can you think about how happy she was? The son have gotten so big till he going to the field with his dad. Can you imagine how that man felt about his child being out there in the field with him? He couldn't feel nothing but good. 
But he sat on that, his mama's knee, and he died. That's, 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 that's kind of tough. And he said to his father, I don't know what, what he had. I don't know what he had. I ain't going to name what he had because I don't know. But he had some problems with his head. And he told his daddy, Daddy, my, I got some problems with my head here. And you know, he did what men always do. They always sent him to the mama. Because mama just about always know what to do. If he gets scraped, scrape his knee, hurt his toe, send him to mama because mama just about know what to do. That baby sat on her knee and he died. And the 21st verse says, she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called unto her husband and said, send me, I pray thee, one of the young men's. And one of the asks that I may run to the man of God and come again. Ain't this awesome? You see, she's not having no pity party. Because she ain't looking at it like most folk look at it. She took that child up into that room that she had done built, on that chamber she had done built on the side of her house. And she put that child in the man of God bed. And after she did that, she didn't have no hissy fit, but she went and called her husband. And she told her husband what she needed. She said, I got to go see the man of God, and I'll be back. This is awesome. And he said, the husband said unto her, what for do it thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, it shall be well. She's calm. She's calm as she can be. She didn't even explain nothing to him, no what had happened, no why it happened, no this had happened. She said unto her husband, it shall be well. She used that shall word. That's, that's a strong word. We all ought to use that word. We all ought to develop that word in our vocabulary. It shall be well. Then she, I'm in the 24th verse, salad and ass, and said unto her servant, Drive and go forward, and slack not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. So she went, and she came to the man of God, to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off, he said unto Gehazi his servant, Behold, yonder come of that Shumanite woman. In, in, uh, in other words, look. Yonder come that Shumanite woman. He recognized who it was. He sent his servant. He said unto Gehazi, Run now, I pray thee to meet her. And say unto her, is it well with thee? Is it well with the husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, ah, oh, it is well. It is well. She don't have no negative nothing to say. 
that's a good thing for everybody to have. She's not negative. Lord, I need a blessing. Lord, I need a blessing. Lord, I need a blessing. She said, it's well. And when she came to the man of God, to the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to thirst her away. And the man of God said, let her alone. For her soul is vexed within her. And the Lord has hid it from me and has not told me. See, sometimes God don't tell the man or the woman of God anything. Sometimes God hides some things from you. Because you'll be go, go, go doing things you'll be doing. God want to do it. He don't want you to do it. He want to do it. Lord, I need a blessing. Then she said, did I desire a son of my Lord? See how she recognized him? She said, did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I say, do not deceive me? Ain't that what she told him in the beginning? Then said, then he said to Gehazi, girl up thy lines and take my staff in thine hand and go thy way. And if thou meet any man, salute him not. And if any salute thee, answer him not again. And lay my staff upon the face of the child. He knew something was wrong by that child. So what did he do? He sent his servant. He gave his servant his staff. He sent help. But she wasn't accepting what he seen. We're going to see in a few minutes. You know, sometimes people can come, but uh-uh. And the mother of the child said, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. This woman need a blessing. Uh-uh. You're sending somebody, but that ain't the one. He was sending his servant, but she's saying, uh-uh. This ain't the one. Gehazi didn't tell me. You told me. Lord, I need a blessing. God is an awesome God. And Gehazi passed on before them. See, first of all, Elijah told him, you go fast now. I said, if, if somebody speaks to you, don't stop to speak to them back. If somebody says something to you, don't answer. This is, this is urgent. People, this is urgent here. Gehazi passed on before them, and he laid the staff. I'm in the 31st verse. He laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore, he went again to meet him and told him, saying, The child is not awakened. In other words, boss, I've done what you told me to do. But the child, the child is not awakened. He, he, ain't nothing happening. She needed her blessing to come from the Lord through the man of God. I mean, he did what he could, but it didn't wake the child. And when Elijah was coming to the house, 
Behold, the child was dead and laid up on his bed. He went in, therefore, and shut the door upon him, twain, and prayed unto the Lord. Oh, this is tough. Oh, this is hard, people. I mean, he got all this in his hand. That child is in his room. That child is on his bed. And that child is dead. And that mama done told him, don't play with me. Don't tell me I'm going to have a child and I have a child. And then I done had this child. This child done died on me. And you told me I was going to have a child. Oh, boy, this is tough. Elijah's in the room. He's in the room. He's in the room, people. And he need a miracle. The man of God need a miracle. And he know that God is able. He know what God going to do because he know what God have already done. He went in there. He shut the door upon them twain, and he prayed unto the Lord. His prayer time. This is where the rubber meet the road at, right here. And he went up and lay on the child, and he put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, his hand on his hand, and he stretched himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child wax warm. Woo! I know he had a, somebody give God some praise. I know he had a Holy Ghost time in that room. I know, woo, he feeling good. Oh, I feel some heat up in here. Oh, my goodness. I know the child was dead, and now I feel some heat in the child. Woo! Somebody ought to shout Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. Child wax warm. Yeah, glory. Think about it. You may be seated. Just think about it. Here's a, die, a dead child in my room, in my bed, and he called. He had a little talk with Jesus. Lord, I need a blessing. Lord, I need a miracle. Got up on the Bible, said he put his eyes on his eyes. You know, nobody wouldn't have thought of this but the man of God. I never would have thought of this. He put his eyes on his eyes. He put his mouth on his mouth. He put his hands on his hand. It said, it said this is what he did. In the flesh of the child, why it's warm. This is awesome. Then he returned and walked in the house, two and four, and went up and stretched himself up on him, and the child sneezed seven times. And the child opened his eyes. Woo, they make you want to run. Because if he done, if he done got on, think about it, if he done got up on the chai, and the chai done wax warm, what he saying? I believe I'll do it again. I believe I'll do it again. He went back a second time. He did the same thing the second time that he did the first time. And the Bible said the child sneezed seven times. You might be seated. I ain't done yet. I ain't done yet. I ain't done yet. Y'all ain't set me down. I ain't finished. You may be seated. He sneezed seven times, then he opened his eye. Can you imagine that child looking around time? What's going on here? People, God is awesome. Lord, I need a blessing. See, I told you, your blessing don't always come in money. This woman didn't need no money. She was all right. 
but she needed her child back alive. She did for the Lord, unto the Lord, and the Lord did unto her. She did something first. I really want y'all to get it. She did something first. When you do something first unto the Lord, the Lord can't help but bless you. But if you're doing it because somebody told you to do it, that's all together different. But this woman seen this man come by her, how she wanted to do something. She got with her husband, they did something. Put Elijah on the spot. He in that room. He know he can't come out of that room. <laughs> he better not come out of that room. And my dead baby in there. He opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, call this Shumanite woman. So he called her. And when she would come, and to him, he said, take up thy son. Woo! We praise God for you watching the Pentecostal Bow Hour telecast. We invite you to watch all of our telecasts. We invite you to be with us in our services. We're in three locations, Forsyth, Lodzella, and Fort Valley, Georgia. We begin every Sunday morning with Sunday school at 9 a.m. Morning worship begins at 11 a.m., and our evening services are here at the Lodzilla Pentecostal Church beginning at 7 p.m. We're in Bible study every Monday night here at the Lodzilla Pentecostal Church beginning at 7 p.m. We're also in Bible study in Fort Valley at the Fort Valley Pentecostal Church beginning at 7.30 p.m. So tune in to the Pentecostal Bow Hour telecast. the blessed Savior, he who washed and made me whole. I would never cease to praise him. I'll shout it while eternity rolls. He touched me. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Touch me and all the joy that floods my soul. Yes, something happened, and now I know Jesus touched me. Jesus, come on and praise his name. 